I am Judith Germain. Welcome to the Maverick Paradox podcast, where we explore what it is to be a maverick and discover effective modes of leadership. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you would like to continue with me, then please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or one of the other popular podcast platforms. Today, we depart from our usual conversation with format. In October 2017, Joe Lawrence asked me to be a guest on his podcast, Inspire Tomorrow. Its mission was to lead others today while inspiring the next generation. I loved the idea, and our interview was the fourth episode, and it sparked my desire to host my own podcast. Joe is an ex-US Air Force training director and is currently a data migration consultant. He's now leveraging 20 years of military leadership experience into the project management world. This was a fun interview to record. Joe and I discussed a number of Maverick concepts. Here is the podcast as it was originally broadcast with gracious permission from Joe. Keep listening to the end of the podcast to hear my commentary. Welcome to the Inspire Tomorrow podcast, where we learn to lead with purpose today so that we can inspire tomorrow. I am Joe Lawrence, and I want to thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey to becoming a better leader, a leader who is willing to lead with purpose. And if you want to continue on this journey, I urge you to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast, so that way you catch all the future episodes, just like the one we have for you here today with Judith Germain. She is an executive coach and author of the book, The Maverick Paradox. Her mission is to propel the maverick mindset into a world where character and integrity will ultimately have a higher premium than personality and bureaucracy. I couldn't agree more with the meaning behind the book, and I will say it's a very fresh perspective on leadership, one that digs into a personality type that we typically don't ever talk about, the maverick the high-performing people on our team. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. Judith Germain, welcome to the Inspire Tomorrow podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me, Joe. Hey, no worries. When we connected on LinkedIn, you told me you have a different perspective on leadership. And after reading your book, The Maverick Paradox, The Secret Power Behind Successful Leaders, I definitely agree with you. So I kind of want to talk to you today a little bit about that book and uh, get into your thoughts on it. But before we get started, what was your rationale behind writing this book? Okay. Well, what I've noticed over the many years that I've worked with different leaders and in different organizations across a load of industries is that mankind has been studying leadership for about 100 years and we still don't know what we're doing. And people are ignoring those mavericks, those willfully independent people who have become socialized enough to demonstrate true leadership. So what I wanted to do was to show the difference between the different types of mavericks, how to avoid toxic behavior and how to lead like a socialized maverick to success. So I guess uh, the next logical question is, what is a maverick? For me, I've been defining mavericks since around. 2005 as willfully independent people. So a quote that I found in your book, uh, The Maverick Paradox, the quote goes, once the socialized maverick has solved the challenge that they have been hired to resolve, their managers would constrict what they were allowed to do. This meant that there was insufficient challenge within the role for them, and a maverick needs a challenge and influence like they need oxygen. Reading that quote, I'm kind of getting a feeling that mavericks are typically hired to solve a problem. And then after that problem is solved, it's uh, we, can't, we don't want them to do anything else. We just want to kind of restrict what they do. Yeah, I think that's particularly true with socialized mavericks. Because quite often if extreme mavericks have been hired, the hiring organization finds it difficult to deal with them. So, <laughs> so they tend to run riot. But with socialized mavericks, because they work, for the greater good, 
And when something is working right, they say, it's not me, it's the team. And if something is working wrong, they say, I will take responsibility because they take responsibility for things that go wrong. It gets to the point where, where their organisation feels that they're no longer needed. And also other people start to get quite jealous because what they see is perhaps this socialised maverick is coming in a lot later in the day than they're allowed to. But what they don't see is at home, they're on the company laptop working to three, four or five o'clock in the morning. So what they see is that the socialised maverick has a lot of autonomy, far more than everybody else has, and they have more responsibility. And people can get quite jealous with that. And they say, why is it if that person's working in this department, yet they can influence all these other ones? That's not right. So that's when the company starts to starts to restrict what they can do and start to belittle what has been achieved because after a while they forget just how bad it was before the socialized maverick was hired. Listening to that response, a lot of it is that the socialized mavericks aren't looking for the credit themselves. And since they're passing that credit off, it's their true value isn't always noticed. Am I understanding that, that correctly? That's right. Because with socialized mavericks, it's all about the influence. As long as they're able to influence change, they don't need the credit. They know they're good. They don't need it. They're more in it for the results. For the results, they're definitely for the results. And I guess before we move on, can you distinguish the difference between an extreme maverick and a socialized maverick? Yeah, I think probably the biggest difference is one of moral and character. <laughs> um, they both they both um, are into getting the work done. Um, the difference with a socialized maverick, someone like Elon Musk is a socialized maverick. They're not interested with ego they don't need you to flatter them they just do what is right and they will if they know that they're part of the problem they'll step aside as long as things get done but the thing with an extreme maverick is it's all about them they can become very narcissistic so they know they're good and then but what they will do is make sure that all the results are focused on them so if they are around somebody else who could be seen as better with them, they will destroy that individual because there's only one person allowed to be influential around an extreme maverick, and that is them. What makes somebody a maverick? I guess uh, what I'm trying to get at is your attributes that you talk about in, in the book. So what are some of those key attributes? And have you noticed that certain, I guess, grooming or upbringing of people that makes them turn maverick as opposed to those who aren't mavericks? Yeah, I That's think a lot to unpack there, sorry. There's <laughs> <laughs> about three questions there. But in terms of attributes, maverick attributes, um, I would say that they will tend to have a willful intention. So that means that they they will do something regardless to what other people say or think. So if they believe this is something that needs to happen, they will do it. Um, and they do have an honest belief. So it's sort of tied in the willful intention. If I honestly believe that this is the right way to do something despite the rules saying otherwise, I would do it and I will lose my job over it because I would do the right thing. Um, the other attribute that they have is that they're very influential. All mavericks, whether they're extreme or socialised, can influence somebody. Although with the extreme mavericks, you see the influence become manipulation. They're knowledgeable. They have an execution and output driven. So the thing with the socialised maverick is they need it to be done so they're not interested in people who got who wants to talk about something being done. Um, the socialised mavericks has got to be done, and it and they're sex sex driven. Um, so that's an attribute of the maverick. And then my next question that I threw at you <laughs> was: uh, <laughs> Have you noticed in your study of mavericks? Is there certain upbringings or grooming that creates mavericks? Like, what would make somebody a maverick over a non? Is there? Do you have a term for non maverick? By the way. Conformists. Conformists. So, I think so there's, there's what's the difference types. between a conformist and maverick, how they're groomed? Right, okay. So a conformist is happy in the status quo. They do not want to risk anything to move forward. Um, they will do enough to get by and they will follow a train track. And I would estimate there's about 55% of the population will be conformists. And then you've got maverick behaviorists. And what they do is they borrow the traits of a maverick. So whilst they're at work, say, or something else that they find highly interesting, they want to be successful in, like maybe sports, they will be extremely maverick, extremely willful in, in what they do there. But then when they go home, they will be more conformist. And then you've got this extreme maverick, the socialised maverick. So I would say is that this, the, um, the traits that lead to leadership 
you, there is a strong genetic component to that. But unless it's the environment that switches this, this on. So, for example, we're all born wanting to please other people. Because if we didn't please other people, we would die. You know, our parents wouldn't feed us. They wouldn't protect us. So, you know, um, but as you grow out, grow older, you become in a situations where either you need to protect yourself emotionally from other people. And then you realize that your opinion of me isn't what makes who I am. And you start to push back. And often mavericks tend to have um, leadership responsibilities really, really early. So whether they're looking after younger siblings while parents at work or whether they're put in positions of authority when they're too young. So most mavericks tend to have done something when they other people would have deemed them too young to be able to do that. So some of it is genetics. Um, for in terms of and personality, some of it's just it's the genetics. positions are put into environment. So for example, people who want to move from conformist into maverick behaviors can learn the behaviors of a maverick. They won't go they won't be a maverick the whole time, but where it counts, they can be you can learn how to do that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I know in some of our email traffic back and forth, you asked me if I was a maverick. And I know that in many areas of my life and different times of my life, I see some of those those qualities of, of a maverick. And I think uh, in certain situations, even today, that I still have, I would like to say more of the socialized maverick. I don't think I'm the, on the extreme side. But I do also know that in many other areas, I, I don't feel that way. So Basically, you're saying there can be, we can be multiple, we can have multiple hats that we're wearing. Sometimes a maverick, sometimes a conformist, sometimes something else. Yes. So I would describe you as a maverick behaviorist. So where it counts in your, in your work, for example, you'll act in a very maverick behavior. So you'll have all the positive socialized maverick traits. And then outside of that, you're quite happy to go with with what happens. Whereas a socialized maverick, well, it, it's a personality trait. So they'll always be like that. And I would say if you ask a maverick, a socialized maverick to do something, their first reaction, they might not, they won't speak, but their first reaction would be like, why? Or can you do this? Their first reaction would be no. And then they go, no, wait, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but, it's like, it's like, but it's that almost, because socialized mavericks have learned not to outwardly go no straight away. Be like, no, because they don't like the control of somebody else, even to the point of lifts. You know how a lot of people will, We'll write lists and then go down the list and say, right, okay, I'll do this. Socialized mavericks don't tend to list because it feels as if the list is controlling them, even if they put the list themselves. So they find another <laughs> way of getting stuff done. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but no, that is that's uh, that is funny. That is very funny to see <laughs> those different things that stick out. Now, what roles? Because I know going back to that quote that I read, you know, we talk about how we um we don't always challenge and we give, give them the sufficient challenge for the role that they're in. And so mm -hmm. I definitely think we need people who are socialized Mavericks on teams. I, you know, you definitely need uh, some diversity of just about all the different character traits and leadership styles and personality styles on a team. If you want to have a solid team, but why do we need socialized Mavericks on team? Okay. Because they will think differently. They will challenge things. So a lot of things that happen in, in organizations, particularly large ones, is because it's always done that way. Um, and they'll always start with a problem at the beginning. So no assumptions. So Mavericks never assume anything. They'll always start, start with questioning, you know, the first thing. Um, and that's often missed in, in organizations. And the solution is often missed because people have assumed a large proportion. So when you have a socialized Maverick on your team, before they start anything, they will ask lots of questions. And it's not because they're challenging for the sake of it. It's because they really want to understand what's the problem. Why did this happen? They will take you through a journey. They will say, when you do this, then what happens? And it goes where? And then it goes where? And who does that? And why does it come from this? Explain how that hits. So constantly, the first thing will be loads and loads of questions. And then once they've done that, the solution for a socialized maverick is very quick. Because one thing they're good at is they're very good at make, connecting the dots and they're very networked. So your socialized maverick will know every single person in the organization that has influence. So whereas everybody else may have to go round a long winding path to get to solution, they'll say, oh, I can just find up so-and-so from finance and then they'll get that information. Or if I just pop down to marketing, I can speak to this guy and he'll, you know, because the socialized maverick always knows who those people are inside and outside the organization. They're hugely networked. 
once they solve those problems, how do we continue to challenge them? Um, Because I'm sure there's going to get to a point where they feel like there is no more problem to solve. How can I keep the Mavericks, the socialized Mavericks especially, on my team? How can I keep them motivated? Because you have to remember for a start as well that they're they're not many. There's only about 5% in the average population of socialized Mavericks. There's not a lot. Um, But to keep them interested and challenged is to treat them like internal consultants. So, yes, they can have their day job and do whatever their day job is, but let a proportion part of that role involve them being able to consult and work with lots of different people within different teams because because of their unique perspective, they quite often can see connections. Whereas people who are very narrowly focused, especially in, in silos in organisations, cannot see that connection because they don't know. So, for example... Um, there may be a problem um, with a particular product and what the company wants to do is throw marketing at it, for example. The socialized market can look at that and say, oh, okay, I can see what the situation, the problem is. It's because the sales teams have done this and by doing this, the ops teams can't deliver because it's against the law to do why. And nobody would have necessarily seen that because those departments wouldn't necessarily have been speaking to each other. This is what I mean. Right. So, oh, because yeah. social. Yeah, so because socialized mavericks, they love to learn. So they're always reading. Anything that impacts on something they're interested in, they will learn it. So if, say, they're working in um, customer service, what they might then do is look at the organization and say, well, how does my job impact somebody else? So then they might look at oh, operations, and then they will study what's happening. They'll, you know, they're going to lunch break, they'll walk off, and they'll find out what's happening in ops. What's the latest of gossip? What's the biggest issues? And then I'll find, oh, Ops has got a problem because marketing. And then off the, so they become very knowledgeable in lots of different areas. So, it's, so whilst they might take a long time to get going because they're asking very detailed analytical questions, the solution comes very quickly because they can see where everything touches. So if I really want to get my Mavericks, motiv- or keep them motivated, it's good to give them a lot of exposure to the different parts of my company? Yeah, that would be good. Um, and to show that you believe in them. If a maverick even dreams that you don't trust them, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> then they're, so, they're going to be shopping for the next. Yeah, an extreme maverick will do what he can to bring you down uh, because that's what they do when they get bored and or they get annoyed. Socialized maverick will try and help, try to fix it, or what they'll do is they'll just become disengaged, withdraw labor, and look elsewhere. And the first time you'll know about it is when they're actually handing their notice and they've got a job. And at that point, you can't turn around because if trust is, for a socialized maverick, if trust is lost, you cannot recover it back. They're very much um, character-driven and integrity-driven. And if they feel that that's that person that they're supposed to be following has no integrity or cannot be trusted, they're not going to hang around. All right, that's very interesting you bring up trust. A um, question for you that I am always trying to get better at myself is mm-hmm. with Inspire Tomorrow, I, I I believe to my core that trust is the most important thing that a leader needs to cultivate within an organization. I know I've taken yeah. over teams and the first thing I do is I go in there and I work on trust before I look for anything else. What is uh, maybe kind of straying away from your book a little bit here? What is your take on how to build trust? How would you build trust in an organization? Do you have a set okay. formula? or? Um, I'm a maverick. I don't have a set formula, but I have a set, I have a set touch points that need to happen. So, for example, I believe that if you can lead your team as if everyone was a maverick, your leadership will be right at the top there. So what would a maverick do? A maverick isn't going to do anything you say if I don't trust you. Trust for a maverick is not a soft skill or soft issue. This is a hard skill. So it's broken down into four points. Um, so you've got integrity, so you've got capability. So is that person able to do whatever it is they're supposed to be doing? So are you capable? <laughs> are you competent? Can you do it? Do you have a track record of success in whatever it is you're saying? Yeah. So that's part of the trust. The other part of trust is then character driven. Yeah. So are you trustworthy so being trusted and being trustworthy is slightly different 
So let me give an example. Um, I can tr I can trust everybody to, but that's um, that's li that's down to me. So I know that if some if I meet somebody that's new, for example, I will um, trust them up to a certain point, to the point where I'm comfortable. If it went wrong, that's okay. Yeah. Or they could, and that's being trusted. So, the, so whether you trust somebody is the person's trusted is a function of how much you can deal with the fact if something went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> if someone is sense. trust, yeah. If someone is trustworthy, that's a character thing. Yeah. Will this person betray me? This this person have integrity? Do what they There's say. Is that based off of track record? Yeah, some of it's track record, but it's also a character thing. So, so a trusted person can have a great track record. They could be the best marketing person or the best person. And I can, you know, I can trust someone to sell outsell everybody else. But I wouldn't say they were trustworthy because they they may well lie and steal to make that happen. Yeah. So the trusted could be about you know your reputation, your competency, and the trustworthy to do with character. So like if so, example. Um, I remember a few years ago, I was a manager somewhere and a customer came up and said, this manager did this. And obviously we dealt with it. But I looked at, but the first thing was, hmm, does that feel like something that this person would do based on what I know and what I've seen about this individual? You know, so I could tell whether, you know, for my first point was obviously you did the investigation of the else, but the first point was, is this person trustworthy? That makes complete sense. Yeah, so it's a character thing. So... I would say to anybody in leadership programs I've run or mentoring that I've done with them is, why should somebody follow you if you're not trustworthy? If you have no integrity, why would I follow you? Because no maverick would follow somebody who hasn't got integrity. You just would bother. So Correct. as part of, as part of my leadership programs or mentoring or, or, or consulting is I teach leaders to be trustworthy. And that's what makes a difference. I, I couldn't agree more. That is the top thing that I work on when I'm mentoring as well is trust. <laughs> if you don't have their trust, you, you might as well just go home because it's, it's pointless after that point. Nothing you want to get done will happen. You know, you might get compliance just because you're the boss and you have the pen, but you're never ever going to get buy-in. So but thank you for sharing that. That is, that's great information. And I, I want to thank you for all those who are getting ready to read your book after this. And those who have read your book for writing it, it was an amazing book, a great read, a very, I love the stories throughout the, it really exemplified the points. And so it was very well written and everyone listening to this needs to go out. If you already haven't and get the Maverick, the Maverick paradox, the secret power behind successful leaders by Judith Germain. It uh, is an amazing book, but Judith, before we get off, uh, where can we send the listeners to learn more about you and your book and the things that you're up to. Okay. Um, they can check out the website, which is maverickparadox.com and they can find me in all the social uh, profiles. Um, so I am on LinkedIn um, under my name um, on Twitter under Maverick Mastery. Um, and of course I've got a Facebook page. I will soon, I will soon be uh, setting up a Maverick group that people can follow me there on as well. Well, I look forward to becoming a part of that myself. And everyone, once again, you need to go out and get this book. And you can learn more about this book and about Judith and the links that she mentioned on our show notes at inspiretomorrow.org slash podcast slash episode 004. All right. Well, thank you so much, Judith. Thank you, Joe. It's been fun. And thank you once again to the greatest listeners out there. I hope you got as much from that interview as I got from being able to chat with Judith. Again, if you want to learn more about this show and about some of the links that we talked about, go to inspiretomorrow.org slash podcast slash episode 004. And don't forget to subscribe to our show on iTunes so that way you catch all the future episodes and we can continue on our journey to lead with purpose today so that we inspire tomorrow. Thank you once again. Thank you once again for tuning into the Maverick Paradox podcast. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my interview with Joe. 
This interview explored a few things that I've yet to talk about in detail, such as the rationale behind my decision to write a book. Whilst my specialism is leadership, my expertise lies in the changing paradigm of maverick leadership. This doesn't just mean how to lead mavericks, the willfully independent, it also encompasses how to develop other types of people to behave like mavericks, utilising the strategies, mindset and power that socialised mavericks employ to success. Of course, maverick leadership is also a methodology, as well as a way of life, how to lead in and outside work. It can be a complex subject, which I take the interested learner through step by step, whether that's via my book, podcast, articles, talks, videos or the website. To harness the maverick nature can be a wonderful, beautiful thing. It is very common for people to be jealous of the success of the maverick and mavericks to be frustrated when they fix a problem that they were hired to solve and then they feel abandoned and cut off from their employers once this fix has taken place. An all too common problem. My book, The Maverick Paradox, The Secret Power Behind Successful Leaders, goes into more detail on this and the other subjects raised in this interview. You can buy that book on Amazon. If you would like to learn more about mavericks and leadership, then please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Stitcher or one of the other popular podcast platforms. Find out how willful independence can ultimately change all our futures. Next time I'll be here with an interesting guest ready to explore the mysteries of leadership. Thanks again and see you soon.